arguing that Roe v. Wade is not a super precedent and referring to gay people as having a sexual preference rather than orientation, which is just ridiculous because it's clearly not a preference. No one just chooses to be attracted to the same sex or a different sex or to Adam Driver. We all simply are. Dislocate my ankles, you rusty cello. Tie my fingers in a square knot, you emotionally unavailable water tower. This network is operated by AT&T. That's right, business daddy. Guess who's swinging again? It's been a while since we've spoken, hasn't it? How are things with you? Me? I'm just sheltering in a void, uh, fighting with some zip coat in Connecticut, and may or may not wish to be murdered by the co-star of Marriage Story. It's been a weird few months. We've got lots to catch up on. I don't mean to wall shame. But if I had a list of hot walls, that one wouldn't even crack the top 30. This stone wall, scorching hot. This wooden one, call me tomorrow, you big tease. This human wall, I think we all know how I feel about that. Collapse on my chest, you impenetrable barrier. Crush my ribcage, you load-bearing behemoth. I think new content is, is always a driver. Uh, in terms of stimulating interest and what have you, and obviously everyone is pretty much starved. Uh, for, you know, for new content, it could very well be <laughs> that you're tired of watching Netflix and you want to see, you know, strong men running around in their underwear. OK. Um, well, first, I would argue that the risks of creating content the way that you are seem to outweigh the benefits right now. And second, no one on that call registered your point there because you just said stimulating, strong men, underwear and, crucially, driver all in the same sentence, at which point everyone's minds turned immediately to getting absolutely bone crushed by Adam Driver. Choke slam me to hell, you nasty shed. Jam your mandible claw down my throat, you irredeemable steer. Quick side note here. Uh, a lot of you might well be wondering where I'm going with this bit. If you're anything like my staff, you're asking questions like, is this sexual or is it violent? And you're then unsatisfied when the answer comes back, yes. If you're like my wife, you might be asking, should I be worried about this? With your concern only growing when the answer is, only if you want to be. And what of Adam Driver himself? Is he bothered by this continued sexualization? He seems like a fairly private guy who's generally uncomfortable with attention, making what I'm doing possibly some form of harassment. He might actually have pretty good grounds to have me reprimanded legally, to which I say, do it. Slap a restraining order on me, you forlorn block. Beg me to stop, you menacing obstacle. And it's not durable, although not as durable, as my love for Cat Adam Driver. Scratch my sofa, you purring mountain. Eat my toilet paper, you fuzzy landslide. Oh my god, they just pulled my braid out through my nostril. I was looking, I can taste blood. That woman took my soul out of my head with that Q-tip. She actually grabbed the back of my head like we were lovers, but instead of kissing me, she was impaling my brain. Yeah, that sounds pretty unpleasant. Unless, of course, your brain is being pulled out through your nostril by Adam Driver. Pull my heart out through my ear, you meaty oak tree. Impale my brain, you unacceptable monstrosity. Now, diagnose- I've worked at McDonald's for over 10 years. On that face that you see that I serves you your hash brown for breakfast, maybe a quarter pounder for lunch, and they even gave you a McFlurry to top off your dinner menu. So I ask you, if I caught the coronavirus, would you want me making your next meal? No, of course not. I wouldn't want anyone with the coronavirus serving me my next meal, unless, of course, that person was Adam Driver, because infecting me with dessert is very much on my running list of things Adam Driver can do to me. Oh, I'm sorry. You thought I'd stop the Adam Driver bit because I'm stuck at home now? You were wrong about that. And yes, I know my wife can hear me. That's part of it. Sneeze in my McFlurry, you pensive bison. Ravage my lungs, you relentless hillock. Look. And that is not good. And what somehow makes it even worse is that over the years, Modi has offered at most tepid apologies for his actions back then, once even walking out of an interview when asked if he regretted that the killings happened, which is just not OK. When you are being asked about your role in the deaths of thousands, you simply don't get to walk out of an interview. That kind of behaviour is reserved for Adam Driver in an NPR interview <laughs> about Marriage Story, and that is only because Adam Driver can do whatever the fuck he wants. <laughs> Step on my throat, Adam Driver, you rudely large man. Break my fingers, you brooding mountain.
most infected within the next year, which is incredibly upsetting because there's only one infectious disease that two thirds of the world should be getting right now, and that's Adam Driver fever. <laughs> Shatter my knees, you fuckable redwood. <laughs> Snap off my toes, you big unwashed buffalo. <laughs> so, if the stock market is tanking, I spent the whole year demanding that Adam Driver demolish me. Crush my larynx, you unwieldy boulder. Explode my... Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Hey, John. Oh, wow. Adam Driver, I can't believe you're calling. Oh, good. Listen to me. Yep. What the fuck are you doing? Uh, excuse me? This bit. Right. This bit. This thing you've been doing that's either sexual or violent. Oh, you know, I, I like to think of it more as a little column A, little column B. This strange, strange bit yeah. that for some reason you've pulled me into. Mm -hmm. What is it? When you first started doing it, it was easy for me to shrug it off. Especially with those shoulders, I bet. But then it kept going on and on. Bet you could shrug off the whole planet with those big peaks. And on and on. Stop talking. Right. Do you realize over this past year what you've asked me to do to you? Collapse on your chest. Yeah. Tie your fingers in a square knot. Yeah. Step on your throat. Shatter your knees. Pull your heart out through your ear. What's wrong with you? You realize we're strangers, right? I don't know you. And now random people on the internet stand us, right. claiming that you thirsting over me is a mood. You're right, Adam, I get it, I get it. I'm sick of people stopping me on the street and asking me if I'm gonna punch a hole in you like a marriage story wall. That's completely fair. Yep. And you know what? You should be ashamed of yourself. Yes. Because you know this was inappropriate, I, right? I do. But just from the beginning, you were just like, what? I was having some weird fun. Exactly. Yeah. And now you're what? I'm America's naughtiest bitch. Uh, sure. But more importantly, you're... Um, six feet of nasty, spankable bird meat crammed into a suit? Sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to get you to say you're sorry. Right. Jesus Christ, you deeply weird, small, small thing. I'm sorry, Adam. I, I'm truly, truly sorry. Consider this bit over. It's done. Okay. Right. It, it's fine. Huh. Look, it's been a rough year for everyone, and I can tell it's really gotten to you, sitting alone in your void. But I think maybe it might be time for you to step out of it for a bit. Get up from your chair. See what the world has to offer. Explore the space, man. Who knows? Maybe you'll even discover some surprises along the way. Huh. All right, yeah, I think I might. Just to be absolutely clear, though, Adam, are you giving me an order? Uh, sure. Yeah, it's just, um, it didn't sound like an order. Explore the fucking space, you hollow-boned Mr. Bean cosplayer. Look around you, you underbaked gingerbread boy. Oh, God, that feels good. I hated this. Goodbye. I mean, that went really well.